The view has changed. Forbes Media is now on the Jersey side of the Hudson. But the free market views of its chairman and editor-in-chief, Steve Forbes, they remain rock solid. He guided us through his company's gleaming new headquarters in Jersey City, made possible in part by $27 million in state tax incentives over the next decade. In return, Forbes Media relocated its 350 employees to the Garden State, a big change for a company that spent almost a century on the other side of the river, but now has a high-tech headquarters that mirrors its evolving media empire. We still do the magazine, still do 12 or 1300 articles a year. Uh, very good journalism. We think it's never been better. Paid circulation has maintained itself. But on the content creation side, on the website, we now have 1,500 contracted contributors, uh, people who uh, do submit copy. And so we have over 110,000 submissions a year. We virtually now do a magazine a day thanks to uh, this technology. How, how many years were you in New York? Uh, 97 years, uh, but uh, nothing is forever. And uh, the uh, building that we're in has been owned by uh, New York University for several years. And uh, now uh, they're taking it over and uh, we're making the move. And uh, we think uh, the view here is great. The uh, facility here is, is great totally opposite of what we had in the old building, but if you're going to make a change, you might as well go all the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are, you're a Jersey guy. Yes. There are a lot of businesses leave New York and go someplace else. What attracted you to, to this location? Well, New Jersey has uh, very good incentives. I think uh, the governor has been very serious about trying to change the environment, which deteriorated uh, very sharply in the last uh, 10 or 15 years. And uh, while there's still a lot more to go, I think uh, the intent is there. And that's the nice thing about having 50 states in this country. You just look around what's working and what isn't. Having lived in New Jersey my entire life, I think it's a state that, as we all know, gets no respect. But uh, if you visit the thing, people are always astonished. I didn't know there was anything but concrete here. How would you characterize the U.S. economy right now? Uh, the U.S. economy is doing uh, better. But uh, let's put it in perspective. We're supposedly in the sixth year of a recovery. This is the first time in American history we've had such a small recovery from a sharp downturn. Why do you think that is? What, what is it that's... Several, several things. One is uh, mucking around with the uh, dollar. Whenever you do that, you get less investing for the future. You've been very outspoken about that. I want to, to ask you about that. Uh, the tax code gets more and more convoluted and anti-growth. And uh, the whole uncertainty about health care. If you're a potential employer, you don't know what you're... Uh, uh, labor costs are going to be. All right, let's, let's start in reverse order there. Health care. Obamacare has been a what for, for the U.S.? It's been a disaster. Uh, it was one thing to try to deal with uh, people who are uninsured, but that didn't mean the government had to muck up and convolute and overturn the whole health care system. Let me ask you about taxes. Obviously, uh, back in 96, when I was covering your presidential campaign, uh, the flat tax became your mantra. It put you, I mean, you came out of the Midwest roaring on the cover of all the news magazines at the time as well. Uh, you still, you'd like to see that? I think uh, we're going to see something very exciting happen in 2016. First of all, today, among Democrats and Republicans, there's a consensus we have to reform our business tax code, which is now one of the worst in the world. And if the president was serious, he could get an agreement on that in a matter of months. We'll see if he is after the turn of the year. On the personal side, I think you're going to see several candidates running for president in 2016 are going to advocate the, their versions of the flat tax. The first thing that you mentioned when we started down this road was the dollar. I think uh, we're going to see a move to start to uh, make the dollar uh, something that is stable in value instead of a roller coaster. What precisely does that mean? What would you do? Would you peg it closer to, I mean, go back on the gold standard? What? Well, we did a gold standard for 180 years and had higher growth rates than we've had since. So uh, that alone uh, means was something we should look at, and I would be in favor of that. And, uh, but uh, the idea that the Federal Reserve can manipulate uh, money, uh, they've been doing this nonsense for six years, which has helped the government finance their deficits. Big companies uh, find it easy to get money, but small and new businesses, households, very tough environment. And small and new businesses are the job creators. So if you have a credit market that doesn't work for them, we all pay the price. The for feds it. made things worse, not better. Some say that they're the ones who guided us through this whole mess. They helped create the mess. They helped create the mess. And after the media crisis, the panic of 08, 09, when that ended, uh, the Fed, instead of stepping back and letting markets work, uh, started to manipulate markets, suppressing interest rates across the board. Uh, that was great for government. 
but uh, for small businesses, if a lender doesn't know what uh, your, the real cost of lending you money is going to be, you're going to get less lending or more onerous conditions. And uh, the Fed hasn't connected the dots yet. You ran for president as a Republican. Do you, do you think that the, only the Republicans will be capable of implementing the kind of ideas that you're talking about? Or could a bipartisan government, could a Democratic government do it? I've seen no potential Democratic candidates who uh, have this uh, a kind of pro-growth program. They seem to have forgotten John F. Kennedy, who ran on getting America moving again, including ma major uh, cuts in taxation. As I, as I said, I, I covered you when you ran for president. Do you ever dream, do you ever daydream, do you ever think about doing it again? No, I'm an agitator now. I get my exercise on a bicycle. I'll let others do the political running. Is there one out there who's either running or could be running that you would like to see in the White House? I'm looking at all of them, including our own governor, uh, in terms of what they're going to put out on the table uh, starting in 2015. You mentioned our governor here, Governor Christie. Uh, does he have the makings of a good president? He has the makings, uh, which is why he's attracted uh, attention and support uh, to be a, a national leader, to be president. He, uh, when he, remember, when he came into office, New Jersey literally had no money not just rhetorically, there were no hidden reserves. He was told weeks after he took the oath of office, the state treasury is going to be empty. And so he had to deal with a massive crisis right off the bat. So he is a person who is not going to be uh, suddenly saying, oh, this is terrible. He's one who's going to dive in and try to do something about it. Now, people are going to be interested to know, what are you proposing to do about taxes, about the dollar, about health care? But they know this is a guy who, if he puts his mind to something, will at least try to do something about it, even if the opposition party dominates the legislature. Mr. Forbes, we thank you for inviting us into your new home, and we wish you the best of luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you for coming by.